Aloha kakoa pau, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. I'm Kaiopua Fife, once again here in San Francisco, where we're continuing our global search for what motivates armchair observers to become active participants in our search for a brighter future for Hawaii. So if you're curious as we are, join us as we visit once again with David Ingham. Aloha, David. Aloha. Greetings, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Uh, you know, we, have, we had a, a nice segment previously, interview with, um, with uh, Edward Cardwell, and uh, I'm going to pick up and try to kind of concentrate on a few points that I know kind of got a little bit slighted. Sure. And try to, try to make this, uh, fill in some of the blanks about you, you personally. Sure. Uh, I know we've talked in the past, and so I know some things that you've, we've shared previously, and I, I want you to share them with, uh, with our viewers. Uh, one of the things that was really interesting to me in one of our recent talks is you, talk, you told about how you first got enticed into the Native American situation and you got some kind of direction that motivated you and, and could you kind of recount that, that little story? And you well, I, I know we were sitting around a campfire and, uh, and uh, some of my friends, they, uh, with the subject turned to Indians, you know, and, and uh, I heard about one fellow was talking about, yeah, well, you know, they rounded them up out of here and there and marched them over to this place. A lot of them died, and that's why there's five tribes up in Round Valley and all these other small rancherias and mm -hmm. all that business, mm -hmm. how that had happened, mm -hmm. and how a lot of them had died along the way, how the mission system had uh, had uh, used the Indians like, like machinery instead of like people. Yeah. And, uh, and So that, that kind of history grabbed you uh, it well it, it uh, I didn't believe it at first and so yeah. I went to go check it out yeah. you know but I mean what actually pushed you into the mm -hmm. to the involvement uh, you mentioned something yesterday in our discussions that uh, there was somebody who was very important to well, you back in Kauai uh, there's a fella that uh, I don't know if I can use his name but I suppose uh, he's gone in Kauai anyway. There's a fella named uh, uh, Henry Kaolali that was a real dear friend of mine and uh, took care of me for a long time and you know it's kind of like superstitious kind of stuff and I don't know it's going to sound silly or ridiculous to some people but I, I, that memory of him and a lot of things a lot of times pushes me on to do some of the stuff I do. Yeah. I don't know if that's silly or what but it's no. you know. No it's not at all and the reason I <laughs> It is stuck in my mind is because it's so appropriate. I mean, your pre previous segment with uh, Ehu uh, was discussing as two non-Hawaiians to each other, you know, in, in a perspective. Mm -hmm. And really, the uh, my perspective from the from the Hawaiian tradition and the Hawaiian culture, and most indigenous cultures, is uh, this is totally appropriate and totally hooked in. I mean, that's what motivates you. Uh, if you don't have the coco, you sure got the connection because that's the, that's the kind of power that makes us do things if we listen. And most of us haven't learned how to listen yet. And, and that's a very important part of it. And you continue your relationship with the, the family, really. Huh? The family, yeah. And I'm not, you know, I'm not sure that, uh, I don't know how, uh, the Henry and Hazel, they were a real heavy influence on me. Yeah, sure. You know? Sure. So, well, you know, when you go, you, when you come from outside a culture at a, at a young age, you know, you use the word formative years, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it has an impact on people who are receptive to it or open to it. You know, you say, uh, the question is asked, well, how did you wind up in Kauai? We know, okay, your father went there, family moved there. How did you pick your friends and you told me what? You don't necessarily I, I, pick them. Well, you don't pick your friends. I mean, it's not like you go, uh, I like that person. It's not like a dating thing. Well, I like that girl. I'm going to yeah. go talk to her. Yeah. You know, friends, they just kind of happen. So, yeah. you know, that's yeah. that's how that happened. You know, and it was like, you know, okay, well, uh, yeah, we're going to go fishing this weekend. Or oh, my Jeep broke. You can come down and fix. And so sure. then we go work on the Jeep or whatever, you know. And then pretty yeah. soon it just uh, get to be real, uh, real close, you know. Yeah, so it's not like something you plan. It just... If it's supposed to work, it comes together. Yeah, yeah. that's that's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, you know, those early years uh, have had a huge impact on you, and they continue to. We know that. I mean, <laughs> I mean we we met up last uh, what last fall in Hawaii Island. Oh and you were, yeah. You were over there. What were you doing in Hawaii? Uh, I was helping my friend build a house. He's uh, he was uh, that's a good story, short story. But uh, my friend, he uh, 
he had the money, so he came down here a while back, and he said, uh, oh, uh, you know, I saved enough money for the material for the house, and but, you know, now in another 10 years when I can retire, then I can leave the hotel and I have the money to hire the contractor to build the house. And I'm like, wait, 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 I know how to build a house. Yeah. And so we said, you know what, let's build it, man. We just get the stuff and we'll build it. Yeah. So that's what we did that. And we've done some other stuff like that, you know, it's yeah. kind of good, you know, because it's yeah. like you jump ahead and, you know, go just do it. Well, that's that's a neat thing. We we have some similar background construction, that kind of stuff. So, And the truth is, it's not as hard to do things as, as some people think it is. But the main thing is get started. You know? Yeah. It's oh, yeah, you got to take the first step. Yeah. yeah. So... So your friend, I think it's Duty. Yeah, Duty. Yeah. Uh, your friend has got a place. I yeah. don't know if it's completed yet, but yeah, it's pa. far down the road, huh? Yeah, it's far. So yeah. Well done. Yeah. And you know that's an interesting thing on Kauai. My family is from Hawaii Island too. Most of the people, the locals there, know how to do things. Well, yeah. And, and that's uh, that's a neat thing. Having the ability. You spoke about sustainability, taking care of yourself. Yeah. Can Can you expand a little bit on what you think it could be? that could make Hawaii work on its own. You, uh, you talked about doing our own thing and supporting ourselves, but. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, I worry about that a lot in the future of Hawaii and how to go about it, you know, and I think there's a lot of things to, uh, to look at in mistakes that other people have made when they've gone that route. And I think yeah. that's number one to watch those because when you start going down that road, there's a lot of places that look like they're good, but they aren't. So that's the number one thing is to avoid that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, the number two thing is education, of course, you know, and like you say, a lot of people know how to do things. And then organization is the third thing. Yeah. Organization and cooperation comes from that. And, you know, I think that's one thing I've seen Hawaiians and they, uh, it was asking me before about what it is about Hawaiians. And I remember I didn't mention it, but cooperation is something they know how to do. Yeah. You know, that's what's so neat. Uh, I was away for a long time and I went back and the thing that I, I love to see happening, even with the, the little kids still today, is they seem to know what expected of them. They know. And you can see if there's a luau or whatever's going on, they seem to know they have something they're supposed to do, and they do it. Yeah, and there, it's, there. It's kind of like a teamwork going on. Yeah, but it's automatic, too. Yeah. It's not like anybody's coaching the team. It no. just happens, you know. Everybody just knows, you know. Well, you know, speaking of education, I, I think that very aspect of what goes on in, in the Hawaiian culture and most indigenous cultures is, the little ones learn by watching the ones that are just a little bit bigger than them, and they keep watching, and, and everybody fits into a place. And it's kind of like a functional society where everybody has their place, and every job is on it, and if everybody identifies it, you can go, you know, you make it good. Make that's, it good. that's how I see it working. That's yeah. how I see it work. Well, a lot of what our, our Voices of Truth uh, series is about is... Uh, getting our viewers to recognize the fact that everybody has a responsibility. And it's not just in Hawaii, because our, our segments show around the world, you know. And it's important that people click that, hey, there's something I should be doing, and the earlier I can recognize it, the better off I am. You know, it's like you're preparing yourself or developing your interest in, in research and so forth. There's such a need for that, and so all of a sudden the need comes out, and here you are, right in the middle of something that you oh, probably kinda, might not have thought you'd ever be in. No, I never did. Yeah. I, uh, one thing uh, uh, that was the most amazing thing about this is when I started doing what I do and getting this information out that I had, is I really, at that time, I didn't think that I could make an impact or make a difference. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, I need to tell people, for, mm -hmm. if not for my own conscience, you know, only for that, but also to let them know where they're going, where this yeah. thing goes. Yeah. And, and so I... Uh, I never thought about that I could make an impact, but now it's a little bit scary because I found out that, uh, you know, I make a lot of impact, but it's the truth, so, you Well, know. And, and the real reality is that everybody can make the impact. There may not be fireworks going off and flags waving and bands playing, but everybody can make an impact and a contribution. You, you mentioned something about, in the recent past, I don't know, it was last year, illustrating uh, a surprising impact that you had on something going on in Washington DC that you never expected I don't think uh, do. we went to uh, yeah we went to Washington I was invited there with uh, by Tony Yardley and we went to go talk about the bill and there was kind of a uh, we rewrote the bill both of us had our own but we wanted to go over there and talk about the bill and say you know there were some people that didn't like that idea they said no you're dealing with the devil but I'm like hey yeah. you know got to do something and sure. so the Akaka bill the Akaka bill so uh, Michael had asked me earlier to 
to try and revise it to make it right. And I said, no, it's just too much work. You know, it can't be done. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so um, I, I did it. I revised the thing. I spent hours and hours revising it, making it all truthful, accurate, and, and putting down, you know, the, the, a good plan instead of a bad plan. Mm -hmm. And I never really expected it to pass or anything, but I had a real objection to uh, finding number four. And uh, I was able to talk in Washington about finding number four, basically what it, there was language in there that could have been interpreted as, uh, it could have been interpreted that the uh, provisional government represented Hawaiians or the Republic of Hawaii represented Hawaiians. And it was clear. And I met with, uh, actually it was um, uh, Colin Kippen and uh, Esther Kiaina and I told them both my worry about that, yeah. and it, w it was changed. And I was really <laughs> amazed that that got changed in there. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I was like, this is inaccurate, this is wrong, and this is how they can interpret it. And it was crystal clear once I was able to make the point. But there are so many others I wanted to make too. But I thought that well, one, if I had to pick one, that was it. Well, and it's good. And and but but that uh, that should emphasize for people is that you can make a difference, but you can't do it if you don't get involved. You know, you don't get involved. Even in Hawaii, at the legislature, a lot of people are frustrated and don't think they can have an impact. Oh, yeah. uh, we have a lot of active Hawaiians now who are making impact on the legislature. We we're talking about the difference between the state and the federal, but uh, that's the way it is with the, you know, the, the Akaka bill is something that, as a Kiwani Foundation, we haven't really been concentrating on too much because of we've chosen to essentially denounce the entire federal recognition system, you know. Uh, I talked to you about that actually early last, last year when I was coming through San Francisco one time. And what do you think about that possibility of going above this Akaka Bill level and looking at federal recognition, I mean, it's clear what we have experienced recently that there's problems with federal recognition, right? Well, when you say federal recognition, you know, I, talking about, uh, you know, if you break it down into federal recognition, the, uh, the term and federal recognition, recognition from the government of the United States, you know, federal recognition becomes like uh, everything associated with how it works in the tribes and, and uh, right. sovereignty that isn't sovereignty yeah. and all Essentially, that. Essentially, what I'm talking about is what is, what, what is in place and administer through the Department of the Interior. You know that that actually, that kind, all those kind of uh, that, dynamics. That federal you know. recognition. That's uh, that's a big mess. And yeah, yeah and it's uh, people uh, need to know about the behavior of the Department of the Interior, and in particular that the report from the United States Commission on Civil Rights: A Quiet Crisis, Federal Funding and Unmet Needs in Indian Country. And if everybody should read that, and that's the, a long, exhaustive report, but it takes about two hours to read, and everybody should read it to know what's going on with. Indians down here. Because in a nutshell, what does it, that say? It tells what the condition of the people is, and it's miserable, and yeah. it also tells the federal government how they don't fund this stuff. They promise you stuff, but they won't fund it. Yeah. You know, they, they, they make an agreement with you where you extinguish your claims right. to whatever you have, land and everything else, mm -hmm. and then and they'll make you a promise, but then you got to wait for the funding, and the funding never comes through, and programs yeah. fizzle out. And then with the DOI, as far as what they do, they're... Uh, uh, they fight fight against Indians is what they do. If you read the Kobo case, there's uh, oh, it yeah. could be up to 137 billion dollars now, and they have fought tooth and nail for something that they've already it's they've been convicted of. Do you think there's any hope with uh, the federal judge who happens to be finding in favor of the uh, Native Americans? Do you think there's some hope there? I think I think Judge Lambert is, is, a, is a guy with a conscience, which is rare sometimes. No, not every judge, you know, I'm not anti-lawyer, anti-judge kind of guy, but he's rare. Yeah. And after, that's the district court, but after it gets out of the district court, then you have appeals and stuff, you know, right. and they can go through all that process. You get a different judge, then you mm -hmm. lose. Mm -hmm. Lambert has done an amazing job. He's truthful, he's honest. But I think in the end, with the Kobo litigation, what's going to happen is, you know, you know, uh, Congress right now is trying to get those guys to negotiate and mediate, and I think they'll get burned in that process because that's the history of how those things go. Yeah, I, I, I have to hope that uh, out of all of these revelations in the courts, at the court level, that as awareness grows among the indigenous people, among the Native Americans, and, and the Hawaiians right now sitting on the side watching this, uh, that we can realize, uh, you know, there is hope because we have this one's judge. Uh, there, there have been findings that prove, yes, indeed, uh, you know, there has been dysfunction in the Department of the Interior. And, of course, our, our contention has been, from our perspective at Kiwani Foundation, is uh, 
we don't want to we don't want to fool with the details of the Akaka bill because the whole system is corrupt. That those departments are it's a, it's a lot more work to change those two departments than yeah. it, not only you had to get your government going, you got to change the whole thinking and everything and, yeah. and 200 years of history. So you yeah. know, yeah. Well, you difficult. know, uh, last year, uh, generally, you know, every year, uh, Kwani Foundation goes to. Uh, the United Nations for a permanent forum on indigenous issues. Okay, so that's that's one th one arena that we participate in, try, hoping to try to move things in a positive direction. At the same time, we always take a run down to Washington D.C. and we take advantage of that time to walk the hill, lobby, and so forth. Last year, when we went, um, we had some really interesting talks with some of our our, uh, our state congressional delegation staff, and we came back. And we gave you a buzz, and we said, you know what they're wanting is they want some alternatives. You know, if you folks don't like this, that's what the staff was saying. Mm. What are the alternatives? And is there an alternative? So we said, David, how about how about proposing an alternative? Although we know that that staff could could snap their fingers and they could have something drafted in a minute. And so we came back, and you did pull some stuff together. When we went back this year, you know what we found out? I don't know if we told you about it, but that same staff had taken that and proposed it to their Congress people and said, maybe we could work in this direction and gain the support, the real solid support of Hawaii. And, and we're talking were, about Marshall Islands, Philippines, Cuba, where they got independence and that kind of thing? Or? Well, no, we're talking about our own congressional delegation being requested by their staff to, ah. to maybe say that there's a possibility something else can happen. Sure. And what we were told this year when we went back is that they got it. They said no way. Uh, at, I think at that time, our congressional delegation was still trying to uh, insinuate that the Akaka bill had a chance of doing anything this year, which we knew it didn't. And yeah. as it turns out, it, it didn't go. Mm. But uh, what do you think about other possible options? I know that you you prefer to research and advise, but. With that comes a responsibility too, because people need direction. You know? Sure. And do you think there's an uh, uh, an opportunity to create something out of the box? Do you think we can do that? I think there is, and I think Hawaiians can. You know, I, I don't know there's a, a, a coalition operating right now, and there's a lot of things saying, you know, we don't know what direction. But I know that the most effective thing that can happen is for this to come from Hawaiians, from from sure. from from Hawaii to, to everybody else to say, yeah. this is what we are, yeah. this is what we're doing, and mm -hmm. not ask or permission or, hey, you guys mm -hmm. got a plan for mm -hmm. us or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, to do it that way. And as far as uh, options, I think there's a lot of them, you know. I know myself, I know that uh, in my mind and everything I look at when I look at all this stuff, that independence is, is, is it has to be an independent government, otherwise you get involved in a lot of other uh, the problems where manipulation happens and things like that. Not that independence is going to have it, so it's going to bring a lot of problems. Sure. The hard work is ahead. Oh yeah, you know yeah. it's it's ahead. Yeah. This is like a walk in the park right now. Definitely. And so there are there are the options. You know, there's other there's other models that you can look at. You know, there's uh, uh, like the Micronesia. There's uh, trust status like that. There's mm -hmm. um, uh, fe what free, is association. Federation, free association, yeah, there's yeah. the things that were supposed to have been offered in the plebiscite, there's that, there's complete independence, and I imagine there's, uh, there's the UN is working on some options for indigenous people, but my problem with those is they don't take into account uh, Hawaiian nationality, in other words, like the, they can exist the existence, uh, within the existence of the Hawaiian what's nation. already there, and, yeah. and the problem with what's already there is it's sucking up all you guys' resources, so how are you going to operate without resources, and so whatever option it is it's really important that you get a hold of the resources what what uh, from your research and from from your looking at the, the big picture everything that's involved what do you think about the possibility of there's being something that already exists for hawaii something that never ceased to exist perhaps in some people you're uh, talking about the kingdom of hawaii yeah the kingdom of hawaii i think it's really important to uh there's been some talk about starting from scratch, and that's a little bit revolutionary and stuff. And in my mind, it's really the continuity of the kingdom is really important, and it's important not to throw the constitutions in the rubbish because Hawaiians made some tremendous sacrifices. And if I can just take a sec second to say this about uh, uh, Kamehameha III, Kaukeole, 
it made some real sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Hawaiians lost a lot. I mean, they really got damaged by what he did. Yeah. But he did it with a reason. Mm -hmm. And to go a route that throws away the sacrifices that he made that included private property, and that included the Maheli, right. and that included a lot of those things, when he found himself in an ocean surrounded by a whole different deal than was before, yeah. and he needed to make some sacrifices. The sacrifices he made got him into community of nations. You became an independent nation mm -hmm. in this whole world. Yeah. And the sacrifices that Hawaiians made through the Mahele and through all that stuff and the losses they suffered to start from scratch is to toss all that and I think it's really important that it doesn't get tossed mm -hmm. not only from emotional point of view but from uh, the world's going to look at you and go yeah you paid the price you're in yeah. you know the United States is saying no you're not in yeah. you know you guys are a state now you guys are whatever but that got you in mm -hmm. and I think that guy knew what he was doing, the Kamehameha the third, that guy, <laughs> a lot yeah, of respect. Yeah, yeah. And and he knew what he was doing and he and it did cause a lot of pain, but under the circumstances it, I think he did what he had to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, people say, oh the Howleys wrote the constitution and this and that and this and that, but you need to look at it from his perspective. What sure, do I do? Sure. Have my country taken over? Yeah. Or do I do make the sacrifices? Yeah. And he made them. And it's important not to throw them away. Well I think it's important that uh, for a lot of Hawaiians um, to realize, especially during that period of time, that everyone had not rolled over, that the royalty had not rolled over. Uh, we have, you know, we talk about Kawika Ole and uh, the Mahele and negative aspects of it, but I think a lot of that information didn't come from the Hawaiian side. I think it was perpetrated. And, you know, we talked about John Osorio's book, uh, Kalahui, what is it? Oh, I can picture it sitting uh, on the yeah, table. It's on yeah, it's on the table. But John Osorio's most recent book, which did nothing but focus on that time frame, and identified, look, the royalty was made, was taking action. And one of the big things was the Mahele. And I think many Hawaiians who are really delving in and researching now regarding the land tenure, what happened to it, are starting to realize, you know what, this, this was a plan. Kawikia only was not giving away the farm. No, man. He was trying to set up a structure that would work within what was coming in that he couldn't control. There you go. Yeah, and I agree with that. You know, it's it's like uh, everyone looking at Kalakaua and saying, you know, laughing, mm -hmm. the laughing Mary Monarch, Mary Monarch yeah. and so forth. When the reality is, he did a lot to archive the genealogies to perpetuate the culture, and it's and it's work that was done and wasn't recognized. And or hidden or belittled. Yeah, yeah, or hidden or belittled. And uh, I think that, that revelation needs to be made to more of the Hawaiian, the, the Hawaiian people so they can recognize that, hey, we, we have things to be proud of in that time frame, and let's recognize it. I think a lot of the research that you do can lead and help to promote that too. Sure, there's sure. so many things that got bent over the years into the stories that you hear and even taught in, a, in public schools, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like, like, I know even in Doherty's book, To Steal a Kingdom, his title on Kamehameha III is The Little King, and I think he missed the point completely, although yeah. I have a lot of respect for what he did in that book. I was mm -hmm. really bummed out when I read that section. I yeah. go, hey, where you got this from? Yeah. You know, where you getting the information, you know? Well, when you mentioned yesterday that... Uh, you know, the contributions of the royalty and those who were movers and shakers uh, during the 1800s are really rough times when the population was falling, the uh, native population was falling over, are really tremendous and we have to celebrate those. We oh, have to yeah. celebrate those times and those accomplishments. And we have to keep reinforcing. The people have to be proud. It's like the young people who are disconnected from the culture and don't know what to be proud of. And it's not just Hawaiians, but throughout something that we can we can really attach to and make our, and be proud of and stand on. So. I think the, the key thing for those people that are looking for pride, man, is stand up and do something. No worry, you'll be proud yeah. of it. Exactly. Yeah. Once again, the point of our series, motivational. Get out of the armchair, mm -hmm. you know, find out who's doing something or find out what you're supposed to do and make it happen. Uh, we talked also, and, and there's this quandary about information and research and we have this big spectrum that goes from in-depth every detail in the world to what people people can ac actually absorb you know and how do you fit it where do you see yourself fitting in there and where do you see yourself evolving well you know you guys i know because you guys are like media guys and you know a lot about how to condense things and stuff but 
as far as my evolving, you know, I continued to write. I thought about writing a book about all this stuff, and I've done a library and things, you know. Mm-hmm. And I realized that people can't go the level of study that I did, you know, because right. people don't have the time, you know. And, right. and I don't know where the hell I got the time, but I did. Mm-hmm. But so, Stay up all night, uh, I think. That in a lot of years, you know, it's, yeah. it happened over years. And right now, it's like uh, the alarm is going off. And nobody can do emergency, all that. Emergency, emergency. I think it's important for everybody to verify information. You know, a lot of these things that are coming out now, they come out and people base their uh, decision about things on, without thinking about it, how many times they heard it. If yeah. somebody tells you the bill guarantees entitlements, and you hear that enough times, and somebody is over here going, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, mm-hmm. read the bill, mm-hmm. then, but 50 people told you, yeah. then you're going to go, well, yeah, it does, yeah. but check it out. Yeah. It's not there. So verify mm-hmm. things. If you're not sure, don't just believe things. So mm-hmm. as far as my piece you were asking me about, I get off the subject sometimes. Yeah. But hey, yeah, <laughs> as far as my piece in this, you know, I, I keep working with to trying to condense things. You know, I know a lot of times I send things out, people go out too long. Nobody can read yeah. all this. Yeah. And I try to condense it down, you know, but mm-hmm. I get in the point where I'm going, well, if I say that, somebody's going to argue this and mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. So I want to get the point in about, but well, you can't argue that because of this, you know. And well, I think we need, we need to have that, that spectrum. Of, of information and how it's delivered, how, how it's compiled. And it's kind of like building a, a case, you know. Uh, you got to have all the details and all the ducks lined up so that if you go to court and they know, you know, <laughs> yeah. all you got to do is, and you can summarize in two paragraphs and everybody knows you're serious oh, yeah. and they don't even have to go into it. But without that backup, which is what you provide, you know, uh, we don't have a solid basis to stand on. And that's, that's, uh, so I encourage you to keep doing the type of research that you do. Please, please keep doing that. And let us occasionally maybe pick out the, 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 the not to say simplified version, but uh, a level of information that people can understand and appreciate, sure. and that's important. Well, I've always said with anything I write, man, it's, it's what I write when it leaves my desk. It's like it's for anybody can do anything they want yeah. with it. I don't have copyright stuff or mm-hmm. I don't going to do the do not duplicate. I don't do that. That's yeah. just like I, it's, it's, uh, it's from me to you here. Yeah. Take it or leave it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we appreciate it very much, David, and we're pleased to be, have the opportunity to be here and to work with you in different ways within the Kiwani Foundation and on research and the way we promote things and and meetings from Oha that come out over to the West Coast, and we enjoy that. Mahalo Nui, thank right. you so much. Yeah. Take care. Thank we'll be you. Be glad to see you back in Hawaii next time. Mahalo for all you guys do. Thank you very much. Once again, this is Kaiopua 5 for Voices of Truth, sending you another segment from the San Francisco Bay Area. Mahalo. <laughs>